In November of 2010, we put together a remarkable volunteer effort to look at what we could model in the way of electricity. We really didn't know what a group of volunteers, even though we had many very talented people, what we could actually model on our own. We had two efforts. One was a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that we built on our own, and another was a model that we produced that came from a modeling package called Homer Energy, and you can look at that at homerenergy.com. Our Excel spreadsheet was very useful for quickly looking at the data, and it was something we always hoped to be able to give away. And you can actually see what our modeling efforts resulted in by going to energyshouldbe.org, clicking on the Delve tab for Delve Deeper, and here you'll see our three videos that add up to only 15 minutes that show you the results of our modeling effort. Now, that model, that spreadsheet that we wanted to give away, it actually became so complex that we really couldn't use it ourselves anymore, and we didn't feel good about giving it to other people. So a small group of us put together a spreadsheet that we hope people will be able to use on their own to learn about load and renewables, demonstrate how poorly baseload generation works with intermittent variable renewables, to help understand high penetration of renewables, and to help others model their own city and region. Now some caveats, use at your own risk. It's best if you have some Microsoft Excel experience and the instructions for downloading this model appear at the end of this video. So let's look at the spreadsheet itself. When it opens it'll probably look something like this. You can view the different sheets down here. You might want to go to the notes page. We give background on the model, who helped make it, where the solar data came from and how to get your own solar data, some general usage notes, and some information about the load, and then finally some information on 3D charts. And this is a combined effort of energyshouldbe.org and renewablesyes.org. So let's look at the model itself. The white areas, those are intended as user input. The green areas, that's output from the model itself. You have one column for Scenario 1 and one column for Scenario 2, and of course matching charts for that. This is the number of meters. That's electricity meters for the city of Boulder, about 47,000. If your city's larger, you can just increase that number, and you'll come pretty close if you're in the Western Hemisphere. If you have a similar economic level as Boulder does, then this, these numbers actually won't be bad. You can also use this number to experiment with energy efficiency. So for example, you could model 10% energy efficiency by making this 90% of 47,000. That would be a rough estimate. The reason it's rough is because when you reduce this number, it reduces the amount of load equally across the entire year. For example, if your energy efficiency is mostly in air conditioning, that might actually reduce the energy the electricity used most during the day and early evening, and much less so at night. In Boulder, we have a water system that includes some electricity generation in the system itself. Our water comes from way up high. Um, we live relatively lower than the, where the water comes from. That allows us to make electricity. Our hydro generation matches our water use, and our water use peaks during the summertime when we're watering our lawns, and that's also when the most runoff is coming from the snow melt from the mountains. We have a biogas generation plant at the sewage treatment plant. That's pretty small, it's only a quarter of a megawatt, so it doesn't add up to much. And then you can enter the amount of solar, the amount of wind. We have multiple wind farms because when you have wind, different wind farms will peak and be off at different times. You can spread out that generation. The last number that you can enter is the amount of baseload generation down here. So let's go through and look at the results real fast. Here's the number of megawatt hours of annual load for each of our scenarios without any renewable energy. This is the amount of renewable energy generated, and these are equal scenarios. The only difference between scenario one and two is the amount of baseload, and these numbers don't pay any attention to baseload. This is how much we actually use. This is the percentage of the total electricity that's generated by renewables. So 40% of our total electricity is being generated by renewables with this mix of renewables. And then there's a certain amount of overgeneration that might occur. You're not allowed to have more electricity generated at any given moment than the amount that's being used. You have to do something with that. 
Curtailment means that either you sell it to somebody else or you turn off some of your generation. And then percentage and hours curtailed and the minimum and maximum of the electricity with this mix of renewables. Down here we actually see some differences between the different numbers. The baseload generation is a new piece and then here's our renewables that are generated. This is the amount of renewables that's used and notice that it's much less where we have baseload. And this is assuming that baseload is a must-take resource, that the baseload generation is something that you have to take. You really can't turn the baseload down. I'll give you an example of that. We say 100 megawatts for Boulder of baseload generation. That's how much is our fair share of Excel Energy. Excel provides our electricity's electricity generation. We're about 4% of Excel's total Colorado load, so 4% of their base load is about 100 megawatts. That's based on running what would typically be considered normal generation for base load, which is 85%. So this is actually 85% of the actual amount that's our fair share. When you drop to 60%, that's about as low as most base load power plants can run without being turned off. So this 60, that's minimum. That's actually a little below minimum, because remember this is 85%. Amount of renewable energy, of course, drops to 35% from 39%, and we have 6% over generation. That's a lot. Think of that as being a 6% rate increase. That's a very big deal, particularly for businesses. Let's look at these graphs now. The red line, that's our load. That's how much electricity we're using for every hour of the day. The green, that's our renewables. And then when the total amount of generation exceeds the red line, that turns dark blue. That dark blue, that's over generation. And not surprisingly, where we have baseload power to begin with, we add our renewables on top of that, we have a lot more over generation. Now, we set it up so that you could choose how many days you wanted to show this picture for and where you started. So, for example, we could go to mid-spring and 21 days and see what that looks like. And what you see here is here's a couple of weekend days and then five days of week and a couple more weekend days. Well, weekend days we use less electricity than we do during the middle of the week. We can also disconnect these two graphs. So we could say, I want to see this scenario in the middle of the summer, and I want to see it for, oh, say, 10 days. When these are blank, it uses these numbers here. It defaults to scenario one graph. Now let's reset that back to nothing and nothing here. So it goes back to being default. And let's go back to the beginning of the year. Now, it'd be nice to see an entire year at once. But what you'll see is that that's actually not very useful information. It gets to be too much detail. These line charts are very useful for a short number of days, but for a year's data, it turns out a 3D chart is better. And I'll actually cut the video here for a moment so you don't have to wait through all of this time. OK, as you can see, this is pretty confusing information. We can still see that there's a lot more overgeneration in this chart than in this one, but really it's not very useful. We're going to set this back to seven days. If you leave it at 365, it'll work fine, but it will take a long time to update all of these numbers. Now what I want to do is show you a year's worth of data with no renewables at all. So we're going to set these to zero. And so naturally, we see no generation of renewables here. And now let's go look at the yearly 3D charts. So our first chart, scenario one, is just going to be our load with no renewables at all. And these charts are different than the charts that you see in the user input sheet. They're not trying to show you over generation. They're trying to show you how much generation is needed after we apply renewables for every single hour. So this is what we would have to use traditional generation to meet, is the electrical load here. 
down here what we've done is for each hour we've taken away the solar, taken away the wind, but we've done nothing with the baseload in this in these charts. We just show you what the results of the baseload are. So this is just our raw load, what it looks like on a normal basis with no renewables at all. And you can see here's summer and here's the spring and fall. And you can see where here we have very broad peaks. What happens is you increase the amount of renewables. This is 40% renewables. You still have pretty much the same peaks you had before, but you get much less broad. Here we've got, oh, it looks like about maybe 10, maybe 12 hours of the day are in these very broad peaks. And here we're down to about six or seven hours, and they get to be much sharper. That means that you can use energy efficiency and load shifting and energy storage much more effectively when you start having lots of renewables. And this gets more and more extreme as you have more and more renewables. And that can actually save money over time. Now, one other thing you can use the 3D graphs for is to get the sense of the shape of renewables generation. So if I took and made this number zero, well, of course, none of these numbers make much sense anymore. If I wanted to see what the wind profile looked like, I can fill in a negative number. So let's see what Spring Canyon looks like if it was 200 megawatts in size. Doesn't make any sense on this page, but on the yearly 3D charts as a minus number when we fill it in, we can actually see what the wind generation looks like. Similarly with solar, we make this zero, go up here and we say minus 160 megawatts of solar, and we can see what the solar generation looks like in 3D. Solar generation is easier to see because of course the sun only shines when the, during the day, so you can see what happens here. To download the spreadsheet, go back to energyshouldbe.org, click again on the Delve tab, and scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a link that says subscribe to the modeling email list. It's free, the model is free also. We do ask that you provide us with your first name and actual city and state. This helps us as we talk to funders. We will not share the information, your name, or your email address with anybody else. We will be sharing the city and state information with others. And the final steps are that you'll receive almost immediately an email and you must confirm the subscription by clicking on the link in that email. The final thing you need to know is that you might want to add ken at energyshouldbe.org to your address book. This will prevent any of our emails from showing up as spam in your mail folders. Good luck!